5 Kilobyte Productions presents another recorder to be shown. This is a Sears reel to reel recorder I got in a, at an estate sale for $8. Let's um, take off the um, top cover. This is a rim drive recorder, of course. This one uses not four transistors like most rim drive recorders, but this one uses five transistors. But there's no change in the fact that it's DC bias. So let's show some close up shots. Here they can see the control switch. It's the blurriest thing you've ever seen. And um, here you see the record playback switch, the speed knob and volume knob, mic and earphone jacks, and the speaker. The motor is a type of motor which rocks on an axis like you have the shafts on each side. One to turn this reel, one to turn that reel. I um, didn't have to replace any capacitors. Basically what I did is I lubricated these parts I cleaned the rubber, lubricated the motor, cleaned the motor shafts where it touches the rubber, and cleaned um, corrosion in the battery compartment. So now let's um, get some reels. Let's see if I can get some reels and put them on and operate the machine. This was recorded on the Grundig TK, um, not TK, but um, Niki. I don't have to. But anyway, um. But you can already hear how much wow and flutter this recorder has because the Grundig Niki runs at a very stable speed. Okay, now it's ready to make a test recording. Um, we'll be using two different microphones in the test recording. We'll be using a classic crystal microphone. This is the one that goes to the Steelman transit tape. It is a very good crystal microphone. And, um, and we'll be using a Sony F96 um, low impedance dynamic microphone and we'll be hearing the sound quality of how each sounds on this recorder. We'll start with the um, crystal. By the way there's operating instructions shown in here. I don't know how well you can see that nor, and if you can read it or not. But anyway, whenever you want to record, it, it, it suggests that you have the speed and volume control in the middle position. And I'm sure it would have originally used a crystal mic. So there, they're in the middle position. And it says to speak, I think, 10 inches away. I mean, this is I'm just trying to do it following the instructions just to to see how it would be when the user would follow the instructions back in the 1960s. Approximately 6 to 10 inches away from mouth. Okay, that distance is established. Now, I am making a test recording on the Sears Rim Drive reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder with volume at mid position. We'll be setting the we'll be using the dynamic microphone and by the way this can work with the cover on now with about the about eight inches or so from the mouth. 
Okay, now that we're done making our recordings, you try to rewind, but nothing happens. That's because when the switch is in record position, rewind is disabled to prevent erasing whenever you rewind, for this does use permanent magnet erase. Put it to play, and then you can rewind. And this has a slow rewind. Now that the tape has been rewound, let's hear the recordings playback. I am making a test recording on the Sears Rim Drive Reel to Reel Tape Recorder, model 8421. Oops, I just messed, messed up the, uh, I read it wrong. It's 8241, okay. Model 8241. 8241. This, of course, you already know is rim drive. This is the crystal microphone sound quality. Um, now we'll be setting the level all the way up and speaking at a greater distance. The level is all the way up, and I am speaking at an arm's length distance with the Sears reel to reel, uh, three inch reel to reel tape recorder. Now let's set the volume lower and speak up really close. Volume's a lot lower, and I'm speaking up close up to the microphone. Let's see how this sounds. Now, now with about the about eight inches or so from the mouth, I'm using the dynamic microphone for the volume at mid position on the Sears Rim Drive reel to reel tape recorder. And now we'll be doing the things we've done before. Let's set it all the way up. Level is set all the way up. Now let's bring our arm's length. Now we go to arm's length distance on with the microphone and the level all the way up. Now we'll be setting the level low and speaking out close. The level's low again and I'm speaking up close to the microphone. Let's see how it sounds with the level low and speaking up close to the microphone. It's a lot weaker with the dynamic microphone. Now one thing I didn't mention before that I forgot about that I then remembered is on this, um, one thing I did do which required soldering. Um, on this recorder, although it did work with recording at first, it recorded with um, considerable distortion and I measured the DC bias and there was 80 millivolts of DC bias, yes, uh, 80 millivolts of DC bias. So. Um, I had I checked with another recorder that I had um, improved the DC bias on and um, found 40 millivolts to be the um, good amount. So I put in a larger bias resistor. The original in here I think was 10k, so I replaced it with a 22k resistor, and and the, now the sound quality, of course, is a lot better than what it used to be. One more time with the dynamic, we're speaking up closer to try to get a stronger signal, closer with the volume almost all the way up. Now, I know this video is going to be too long. Sort of try to get a stronger signal, closer with the volume almost all the way up. And of course, it has the speed control. Now I'll be showing how it records music.
Well, that's it. Yeah, I was just giving you a little tour of my extremely messy room while that was playing. <laughs> I mean, it's just so dang messy. I mean, even with all these shelves up here, there's just not much room for things. By the way, there's a little peek at the Steelman transit tape. And the Magda Core 1024, the Philips Norelco recorder there. Oh, and there's a wall and sack, very much like the one Clyde site recently got. Um, it needs some work. It does work, but uh, one of the amplifiers is stronger than the other, and, you know, it's, it needs some work on it. Yeah, but there's that classic. Okay, hope you enjoyed this one.